Hey everyone, this is Mike and welcome to my guide to E6 Savage. Now there's a lot of stuff going on in this fight, so I'm just gonna immediately jump into it. One of the coolest mechanics in this fight is probably the tether cutting from Garuda. There is a mechanic that basically has feathers cut across the arena and they can literally cut any tether that is in this fight, which is going to be very important uh, for some of the mechanics. But the first one that happens is Superstorm. This is a normal AoE. So just mitigate through this as normal. And then right after this, we are going to be spreading out in groups of four. We have markers set up, one, two, three, and four. We basically have one tank and one DPS assigned to each one of these. And then of course, one healer and one DPS as well to the other ones. And this is going to be very important for pretty much throughout the entire phase as we are always going to be using these groups of four. So, first thing that's going to be happening is Storm of Fury, which is an AoE around her as well as her tethering all four of the DPS. What is very important here is that you do not have these tethers cut by these line AoEs, because if you step over this line AoE, this attack right here will cut the tether. At first we thought we needed to do this, but actually in the end it just made it so that the mechanic goes on random people and that usually ended up killing them. So, make sure that your tethers do not get cut, stand in your four corners and then the AoE resolves. Right after this, get close again and stand on your markers because we get enumerations. Each time you see an enumeration in this phase or in this fight, it's going to be for two people and this will also leave behind AoEs. So just stack up on your markers, enumerations goes out, we move to the middle and the AoEs go out. Right after this, we are going to have Pharaoh Storm, which is a nail mechanic, as we like to refer to it. Uh, this is something that will usually catch you off guard, so she'll spawn two nails on either side of her. Uh, this is random in how they are relative to the boss's position, so just make sure that you do not get hit by these, basically. And these will be two big cleaves going out from her hitbox towards these two nails. Then right after this, we are going to be getting a knockback. You can arm's length this knockback if you want. It's basically the same as Sephiroth. And then each tank, I believe it is, will also get an enumeration on them. Or, well, tank and healers. So basically just, again, stack up in the same pairs as you did before. We'll also leave behind an AoE like before as well. So just basically dodge that one. After this, she'll jump towards the middle and do Vacuum Slice. This is going to be separating the arena in two different quadrants. This can go from north to south as well as from east to west. Basically, again, stand on your assigned marker with your partner and the mechanic will kind of take care of itself. Also, do not try to cross the arena because this is a one-shot. Occluded front will spawn a bunch of feathers. Now, it's very important to know that these feathers have two different spawn locations, I guess you could call it. There's basically two different patterns. You have the pattern that we have here, but you also have one where there's only three on each side, and then that one is a little bit different to dodge. So as you're progging it, this can look a little bit different uh, from the way that it does for us right now. After this, as you can see, DPS get tethered again, so just again, like you did before, stack up in your pairs of two, and then after this AoE goes out, Garuda is going to be pushing you towards the middle. So make sure that you are standing as far away from the middle as possible, but still far enough away that you do not get hit by the explosion of the feathers. Also important to know is that if the feathers are close enough to the middle, they'll get eaten. So as you'll see, this one is going to disappear because it gets sucked into the like vacuum slice. It disappears, it doesn't explode, and then we are basically safe from this side. As you can see on the other side, they had a different pattern where there were only three feathers, we had four feathers on our side. So depending on how it spawns, you might have to adjust your safe spot slightly. Right after this, we have another Pharaoh Storm, so make sure that you do not get hit by this one. And that is basically going to be the end of Phase 1 of Garuda. Here we have Ifrit spawning in, so just make sure you run away from this. This does not do a crazy amount of damage, but using a shield, standing away from it, is always going to be very nice. Cool mechanic about Ifrit is his tank buster, because it is a very different tank buster than what we are used to. So he'll tether towards the player that is first in aggro, 
and he's going to be jumping towards them and give them a debuff called Lightheaded, as well as spawn an eruption on the place as where he went. What you have to do for this is your off tank has to provoke the boss and take the tank buster, because the Lightheaded debuff makes it so that when you get hit by another instance of damage, one of two things can happen. If you get hit by uh, like a tiny bit of damage, I guess you could call it, you get a concussion, meaning that you're just stunned in place. If you get hit by something like a tank buster, you actually get basically knocked up into the air, which you'll see happen later down in the fight as well because of how we handle one of the tank busters. But basically, for now, how you handle this, the main tank that was tanking Ifrit is going to get a tether, they are going to be hit by a auto attack like attack that gives them lightheaded so you don't need cooldowns for this your off tank will provoke the boss and they will be targeted by the real tank buster which is called instant incineration also has this very big aoe indicator it is also an aoe this time around so make sure you don't hit other people so make sure you cool down through this but right after this tank buster is going to be doing meteor strike on the first person in aggro, which is in this case the tank that just took the tank buster. And as soon as this starts casting, this locks in the position of the person that is tanking the boss. And he's basically going to be doing a big dive bomb on it. So make sure you move away from that position, as this will do a whole lot of damage. And that is basically how you handle the tank buster. You'll also see in the add phase that there are a few different ways in how you can handle the tank buster there as well. Um, but we'll see that when we get to it. Inferno Howl is a big AoE, uh, so just mitigate through this one like normal. And then we go into the first set of tethers. For the first set, it's always going to be a healer that gets targeted. For the second set, it is always a DPS. Now, in certain parts of the fight, it is important that tanks do not get hit by certain tethers. So the way how we handled it is we gave the first set always to tanks and healers. We give the second set always to the DPS. It's not important for some of these but it's just good to make it a routine to always get used to doing the same thing over and over again. So as soon as he starts casting Hands of Hell, the marker on top of the healer's head will change into tethers, and then basically all of the tanks and healers need to make sure they have one feather. The person that had the marker on top of their head will also be the one that gets the real Ifrit to dash towards them. So what you do here is you spread out, Make sure you also go a little bit further from the middle of where his starting position is. This is important for a later phase in the fight, not as much for this one, um, but it's just a good habit to get used to. All four of the Ifrids dash towards their player, giving them the lightheaded debuff. Uh, this debuff is the reason why tanks can't take certain uh, markers later down the line in the fight as well. And it will also place an AoE on the floor of where all the Ifrids landed. Then, right after this, we are going to be going into Strike Spark. This is what we like to refer to as soccer, um, because it's basically what Ifrit is going to be doing, or football, whatever you want to call it. So, a bunch of Ifrits spawn around the arena with a bunch of fire orbs in front of them. Now, all of the Ifrits are going to be kicking, that's why they're playing football. Now, you do need to know that not every Ifrit is going to be hitting a ball. So for example, this one is facing this way, so he's not going to be kicking the ball that's next to him. So what you do is you move around the arena and you fight the leftmost Ifrit that is going to be kicking an orb. Since there is no Ifrit here, this, these two orbs can't be kicked over here. So D is our safe spot in this case. This mechanic will come back later again as well in the final phase. Um, so you'll have to make sure that you can do this quite regularly, I guess you could say. So eruptions go out, and as soon as the eruption goes out, that's when you move towards the safe spot. In this case, it is D. He kicks the AoE away, and there we go. And then right after this, we have the second set of tethers, this time on all of the DPS. So everybody grabs their tether, moves out. Make sure you do not overlap these, because if you get hit by two of these AoEs together, you get the concussion, as I said, because one applies lightheaded. The second gives you the concussion because you got hit with some light damage. Uh, and then again as well, these do dashes as well. Uh, so make sure you definitely don't hit the tanks because the tanks are going to be handling a tank buster right here. So again, hands of flame on one of the tanks, shirk towards the other one, and they are going to be taking the real tank buster. So real tank buster starts casting. And then after this one finishes, he's going to be doing the meteor strike again. So make sure that you dodge away from that. 
and that is the second phase of Ifrit. After this, Garuda and Ifrit will spawn at the same time. Now, what is important to note is that they take the aggro list from before. Now, we're not 100% sure if they take the aggro list that they specifically had when they vanished, or if they take the aggro list from Ifrit. So we're not 100% sure about that, but just know that they take the aggro list from before. Not sure if it's from their personal phase or if it is from the Ifrit phase. That is important for one of the mechanics that is going to happen right away. So as they spawn in, they cast Hated of the Vortex or Hated of Embers. What this is going to be doing is it's going to be placing debuffs on all of your players. Four people are gonna get the Vortex debuff, four people are gonna get the Embers debuff. What this means is just basically who you're going to be fighting. So if you've done O11 Savage, this will be very familiar to you because you could only hit the male or the female Omega. Um, this is basically going to say you can only hit Ifrit or you can only hit Garuda. It's also distance based, so basically go stand onto the boss that you want to be fighting. Now what is important to note here is that our warrior is currently tanking both of the bosses because he ends as the main tank in both of the Ifrit as well as the Garuda phase because we're not sure if the aggro list carries over from Ifrit or if it carries over from both of the bosses. So that is why our warrior is tanking both right now because Ifrit is going to be doing a tank buster. Now there are three different ways on how you can handle this tank buster which these little feathers here in the back are a part of. So the feather spawn, our warrior is gonna be tethered by Ifrit and these are the next three things you can do. So since our warrior is tanking both and our paladin as you can see here in the uh, like the party list has the Ifrit debuff, our paladin in the way we do it is gonna provoke Ifrit and take the tank buster like normal. What you can also do is have the Paladin provoke at the start of the fight, so your Paladin is tanking Ifrit and the Warrior is tanking Garuda, and then your Paladin can use his Invon, Hallowed Ground, or like of course if you have a different tank like composition, doesn't matter, um, but in our case it's the Paladin. So the Paladin provokes Ifrit, he takes the first hit, and then for the second hit, the Tank Buster, he's going to be using his Invon, get knocked up into the air, and then take the Meteor Strike with his Invon as well. We'll be using this tactic, I guess you could call it, for a later tank buster in the fight, but you can use that here as well. And a third way to do it is to have both of your tanks go far away, cut the tank tether that is currently on the warrior with the vacuum thingies from Garuda that are going to cross around the arena, and then Ifrit is going to be dashing onto, we believe, a random player closest to him. We're not 100% sure how this is baited because we personally did not use this technique, but it is possible to cut the tank tether, have him jump towards a random player, and then have the paladin just take the tank, uh, like the tank buster, like normal. I think that one is the most risky out of all three of them. The having the invuln is probably the easiest to pull off, um, or like the yeah, the easiest to do, I guess. But it is annoying because you do lose a lot of uptime. The way that we do it, I think, is the best way to do it, which is just have one tank tank both of them at the start and then provoke as soon as this tether comes out um, towards the tank that is going to be tanking Ifrit. So in this case, Warrior has aggro of both, stands close to Garuda, Paladin doesn't have aggro, stands close to Ifrit, so he gets the Ifrit debuff, and then as soon as the tank tether appears, make sure your Paladin provokes Ifrit, so he gets the normal tank buster. So he's going to be provoking here, make sure that the tether does not get cut by the feathers from Garuda, gets lightheaded, leaves behind the AoE, so move out of that one, and then our Paladin is now going to be getting the normal tank buster as always. He's going to be moving this far away from everyone so that we have enough place basically to dodge around, um, because there is going to be a Meteor Strike happening right here, so make sure you move away from that, and then BAM Meteor Strike. Garuda also cut the arena in half during this time. Uh, we decide to stand on the side where Ifrit is so that everybody can be on the same position uh, as this is going to be the easiest to call out for the next mechanic. So just like in the first phase, Aruda is gonna, or the first phase, uh, Garuda is gonna do occlusion front again, spawning either three or four orbs on your side. We got four orbs, but this time around Ifrit is also gonna spawn clones and gonna kick one of the orbs. So in this case, these three are gonna stay because this one would disappear, but if it is kicking it away, so it's gonna stay. So we are gonna have to dodge towards the left of the arena. 
very important to stay stacked up in front of Garuda because there's gonna be eruptions going out first. So we wait, eruptions go out, and then we move into the safe spot. Again, we get sucked into the middle, but this orb just disappears into the vacuum slice, so we are safe here. Right after this Federal Storm, so make sure you do not get hit by these cleaves. And that is going to be the end of the at phase. Once they do their, like, unity mechanic, I guess you could call it, they're also going to be doing a lot of damage, uh, so make sure that you have plenty of mitigation for this one. We didn't take much damage because we had, well, a whole lot of mitigation for it. First mechanic that he's going to be doing is, again, the tethers. Again, tanks and healers take the first set. But this time around, there is going to be an extra mechanic added on top of it, and that is that he's going to leave behind a safe spot. So when Ifrit, whenever, or well, when Ifrit, when Raktapaksa does any of the dashes in this phase, he's going to be leaving behind AoEs. So you always want to make sure that you basically move towards the safe spot after this. This still gives lightheaded, as well as the eruptions as well, so that's why you need to move a little bit further out than usual, because you want to make sure that eruptions don't overlap the safe spot. Right after this one goes off, the DPS get their tethers. So stack up, grab those tethers, and then move away. And make sure you just give enough space, basically, um, for people to move into the safe spot. The reason why... Uh, or actually, for the first set, it doesn't matter um, for who gets what. But we just basically wanted to make it so that tanks and healers always had first to just make it a routine thing. Inferno Hall is just normal AoE, and then we go into our enumerations again. Normal, just same as first phase, put them on 1, 2, 3, and 4, the same pairs as always. They leave behind AoEs, as always as well, but this time around there's also a Feral Storm, as you can see, two nails. So make sure that you do not get hit by these cleaves. And then right after this, we are going to be going into the second strike spark. Just the same way as you handled it in the first phase, or in the second phase. Stack up in the middle for the eruptions. Look for the leftmost Raktapaksa this time around. So 2 is going to be our safe spot, because there's not a boss onto the left. I'll just rewind a little bit so you can see it a little bit more clearly. So all of them spawn right now. And as you can see, there's no boss on the left, so 2 is going to be our safe spot. It does look a little bit daunting at first when you first see this mechanic, um, but once you know how to handle it, you just have to look to the leftmost boss. Uh, it's actually relatively easy to find a safe spot. Now, right after these AoEs go out, the main tank, again, is going to be tethered and is going to be jumped upon by the boss. The way we handle it is not a good way to handle it, but it is totally viable. So everybody basically gets lightheaded here, uh, and then we use a tank in Vuln to take care of this mechanic. So as you can see, our warrior just used his home gang, he just got kicked into the air, and then the meteor strike is gonna land on his face with home gang still in place. This is also the way how you can handle the tank buster during the ad phase, by the way. Um, but it is not advised because your tank is going to be losing like 2, maybe 3 GCDs or something like that. The correct way to handle this one is right as the AoEs go out, right now, your main tank uses his gap closer to get close to the boss and then nobody except the main tank will be hit by this AoE. But the timing is very tight on it, uh, so you could dash too soon and get hit by the AoEs and die, you could dash too late and then the whole party still gets hit. So if you just want to make it as consistent as possible, you can just use an invuln for it until you get used to the timing or something like that. It's not the most optimal, but it is very consistent uh, to take care of it like this. And then after this is going to be moving the boss towards the middle, because we are going to be doing pairs again. Uh, oh wait, not yet, not yet. The pairs are going to happen after this one. So, there's going to be two safe spots, one between 1 and 3, one between 2 and 4, for the eruptions that are going to happen right here. Uh, we all just stack up on the same side because of how we're going to handle the next set of mechanics. 
So one tank will get tethered to a healer, the other tank will get tethered to the other healer, and the four DPS also get tethered in pairs of two. Now whilst this happens, there are three mechanics that need to be taken care of. We have the two uh, tornadoes over here, which both of the tanks are going to be taken care of, and then the DPS are going to be basically baiting the cleaves from Garuda, like the feather thingies, whilst they do not get hit by them basically. These tornadoes will do very big cleaves on the closest person to them, so just make sure as the tank pop your cooldowns, stand close to it. If you are able to save your Hallowed Ground from the Paladin, for example, like we did, uh, you can use Hallowed Ground here because it's a very value usage of that one. And then whilst they are getting cleaved, the healers make sure they are healed up as well. The DPS are going to be slowly moving through the boss, baiting all of these AoEs, making sure that they do not get hit. And then right after this one, we are gonna get enumerations. These enumerations are not the same as in the first phase. They're going to be on the pairs that are tethered together. So we basically gave the tank that is on the north side one, the tank that is on the south side three, and then for the DPS, we just use a callout. So for example, I was tethered towards, I believe the machinist, I say, me and the machinist go two, the other group goes four. So stack up for enumerations. And then right after this goes off, make sure you're at the back of the boss, because Conflict Strike is gonna finish. So I'm gonna rewind this phase real quick, so that you can see it all the way from the beginning. So he jumps away, doing that knockback, stack up between 1 and 3, so that you do not get hit by these eruptions. One tank and healer goes north, one tank and healer goes south, just... Uh, say, for example, Warrior South, Paladin, uh, well, Warrior North, Paladin South in our case, and then the healer that's tethered to them adjusts, and then your DPS just slowly move through the middle, not getting hit by these AoEs. Uh, if you move too far away from each other, the tether will explode and kill everyone. So here we call out, I'm going to two. Tanks and healers come to the middle as well. Enumerations go out. And then everybody moves to the back of the boss, so that you dodge the big cleave that's happening in front of him. And then we go into the last big set of clusterfuck mechanics. For this one, we're basically going to be using our positions again at all points. So, first one around, again enumerations, as we did before. But this time around, instead of going towards the middle, we're going to be moving outwards to our 1, 2, 3, 4 positions. Normally my Paladin should have been on me here, but luckily enough it didn't cause a wipe. There we go, all of the AoEs go out. Big AoE, Inferno Hall, so just mitigate through this one. And then we have the first tethers again, so again tanks and healers make sure that they grab a tether. But this time around Garuda will also spawn the feathers again. So it's going to be important that every tank and healer grabs a tether, goes to their marker, but make sure that their tether does not get cut by these things, because if the tether gets cut, the hands of hell will go on random players and this will kill people. So just stand in your corners, wait for the AoEs to go out, and now move out. All of the DPS, make sure that you're in the uh, cardinal positions, so that you do not get hit by the dashes of Ifrit. If you get hit by the dashes, you're going to get a lightheaded debuff, and then you're going to be getting a concussion on the next mechanic, meaning that you're going to be dying. So DPS, Cardinal, Tanks, Healers, Intercardinal, make sure you're far enough away so that there is enough place in the middle for a safe spot. And then after this, reposition the boss towards the middle so that the DPS can do exactly the same thing. This time around, it is going to be with enumerations though, and we handled this wrong. The best way to do it, in my opinion, is to have these enumerations go way out, um, because it will give so much more space. Um, we still managed to do it, but it is a way too tight, and it's just not a good way to handle it. So you should use these enumerations and place them much further to the back. Because right after these go out, Ifrit is going to do his dashes on all of the uh, DPS, and then everybody needs to move into the middle. So if the enumerations, instead of on the markers, where, where I'm standing right now, instead of me having to run around, as well as our tanks and healers, they have to like try to dodge these as well, um, it's basically going to be giving so much more space. 
So instead of placing the enumerations like we did, I'm going to just quickly rewind back to it. So our DPS get the tethers here, together with the enumeration. So instead of placing them on the markers, place them like a good one or two AoEs further past the marker. Um, because then they can just stay there and basically place this AoE on top of the enumeration AoE. And then you can just move into the middle uh, rather than having to dodge this one first because this got our Astrologian killed. Right after this, Ifrit is going to be doing, or Raktapaksa is going to be doing his uh, tank buster again. Handled exactly the same as before, just off tank provoke. Um, but this time around, because he dashed, he leaves behind those two big uh, AoEs next to him, as you can see over here. So just make sure you move into the safe spot and that your tank takes the tank buster as always. So after the tank buster, gonna be a meteor strike again, just, just move away from that position. He drops down. And this is pretty much the end of the fight. Is he going to be doing two more Pharaoh Storms back to back, which is the, uh, what they call again, the big cleaves, as you can see right here, two nail spawn. After this one goes out, he's going to be doing a second one immediately after it. Uh, so just make sure you dodge that one. And then he's going to start casting his Enrage, where he jumps to the north, raises his blade, and then does the Enrage. So that's pretty much this fight. Uh, if you have any more questions about certain mechanics or something that was unclear that I did not explain well enough or something like that, feel free to leave it down in the comments or hit me up on Discord or something like that. The links are all down in the description in the description for that one. But I hope it was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.